we're live now. Okay, you got your phone. Put it on mute. And uh, just go to my page. We're live now. I'm going to go to my page myself. We're live now, so just so you know. Uh, let's take a moment to just uh, make sure everything everything's cool. I'll find Chris Rowland in here. Huh. So it should be on my page at the top of the page. And so what you can do is just grab your phone and, act, and uh, like you're going to watch it. And, uh, and then just click share. And you can share it to your groups, to your page. I can't pull it up for some reason. Hmm. Yeah, so, now you Let me see if I can get on the news feed. Uh, no, nope. oh, on that. Look at that. Where do I go now on that? Uh, no, go to my page, Todd Medina. Oh, sorry. Yeah, we, we broadcast from my page. Okay, here we go. Yeah, we got eight people in the house. Yeah. Now okay. So here we go. I was marketing it. I was telling people it was going to be on the other page. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> That's okay. They'll find it. In fact, I shared it. I'll share it on that page right now. They can. Yeah, if they go to the page, they'll find it there. Okay. So let me so just there, let me. Sh so there it is. What do I do there? Now you can uh, go down a little bit. You'll find the live. Click it like you're going to watch it. And uh, and then a share button will come up, and you can click that, and it'll say share. Share so now. And, the image? Uh, yeah, you can, no, yeah, you can click on the image and the share button will come up. It's quicker that way. Now you can uh, go down. There we a go. Bit, you'll find yeah. the Oops. live. Click it like yeah. you're going to watch it. Yeah, there you go. And just click the share button and it'll say share Got now. It. Share to Got the group. It. Yeah, you're good. All right. So let me just share it around a little bit. We've got 16 people in the house. It's late night for the Americas, but we've been pulling more and more people in this time slot so that's all good let me just give a shout out to the folks that are here let me see what we got here i think you actually okay so yeah and you can share it with your friends and all that all right so we got uh diana beaumont's in the house laura gill ellen essence beth bushlash is back nick Valentino <laughs> from down in australia soraya williams Shaz Saz, April Lloyd, C.G. Haberhauer. Greetings from San Diego. She's up late. Karen Cox. All right. <clears throat> we got 19 people in the house. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm just, I'm clicking away. <laughs> there you go. There you go. And it's funny, on the uh, personal one, I, there's, it only kicks me up and allows me only to a certain number. Yeah, it'll only do that. Yeah, that's Facebook for you. That's okay. We we love and appreciate the uh, the uh, opportunity to connect. Philomena James from Italy's in the house. Mary Cooper, Cooley Partell from Estonia. We're getting a lot of people from around the world in these. Uh, I would want to say odd time slots, but not traditional time slots that we've done in the past. Harris is in the house. So uh, we got a lot of new names in the house. So I'm going to go ahead and introduce myself. I'm Todd Medina. This is Soul Speaks Five D. Uh, this is our primary show on the Soulgy Dot One Network, which is ever expanding as we we continue to move towards our goal to create a 24-hour seven channel and then add more channels later. We're doing it in the 5D way. We're not trying to structure anything. There's no linear time, so we're not putting any pressure on ourselves. But we have a we have an exciting show tonight. We've gotten together once before. We tried to get together after that. You went through some things. My condolences to you again and your family on that. Uh, but you know, everything's moving really fast. So it's a pleasure to have Chris Rowland back tonight from South Africa. Welcome to the show, Chris. It's great to be back with you, my bro. Yeah, it is. It really is. It feels good. It feels yeah. like a good energy. Uh, you, uh, the last time I talked to you, you had a book out, but I think you just came out with a new one, didn't you? I did. Oh, wow. I, I, I should have had one sitting next to me. I could have held it up. <laughs> well, this is the time to do it. <laughs> Here, hold that thought. There you go. Aloha from the Sunshine Coast. Hello, Charlie Duck. And and Antoinette Bishop. The CSC is back, always there supporting us and loving us. There Jeff you go. Kaplowitz. There you go. It's not personal. You now that's one of the little phrases I've coined from uh the ascension is uh it is personal, but don't take anything personal. Because <laughs> yeah. yeah. it's all about us, right? So, so what have you been up to before we get into the book? What have you been, what's been going on? I mean, uh, you know, in these circles, a lot of people have been talking about 
these and of course they have been for for you know months and years all the energies and the and the blood moons and the solstices and the equinoxes and the in the in the stargates but it seems to be something really going on since the solstice particularly since january the first you know people getting sick unexplainably and, and a lot of things popping up and how, how are you seeing that how are you perceiving all that well I, you know for the last year i've been it's been really funny i've been um downloading i mean just really? download on a constant download uh, the amount of information that's just coming in and, and knowledge and wisdom from others that just comes in it's just constant in in almost everything i do now i spend a lot of time alone yeah no particular reason for that other than it feels natural for me. When I, I remember when I was younger, I always liked being alone. I was never somebody who liked to be out in the crowds a lot. In fact, if I go out to a mall or to a party, something like that, I feel a little bit uncomfortable, a little claustrophobic, partly because there's just a whole lot of energy that I start feeling. As an empath, that energy comes in yeah. and it in fact becomes overwhelming to deal with. Yeah. So I, I like being alone and spending my time alone. And I spend a lot of that time writing and I spend a lot of time since I spoke to you last um, the work in terms of working with my with clients one on one in the what I call the sessions with Chris that has taken off and doing well and I so I have people around the world I have people in the UAE in the United States in Australia uh, that um, that I do sessions with on the phone um, and in Europe and um, and so that's a blessing for me because it's an opportunity for me to do the kind of work that I felt called to do. So when clients um, connect with me and we have those, sometimes we go two, three, four hours in our sessions and I actually thank them and say, you should be paying me because I get much more out of this than, than, than you get out of it. So, so that's been going very, very well. And I feel just am amazingly blessed to be able to do that, to share in that. And that's really, you know, all that really is is just two human beings connecting on a much deeper level yeah. and yeah. Bringing, bringing up the things that are going on underneath. Because yeah. a lot of times people don't see those things. And so the, the space is held so that can come up, not just for them, but for me as well. Yeah. So that's yeah. one of the things that I've been doing. And uh, another great thing that's going to be coming up, I can kind of talk about it now because we've solidified the agreement. I I was asked to do an interview for an American um, miniseries, a, a, a documentary miniseries that came here and um, quite quite a well-known gentleman in the States, Matthew Knowles, who's uh, Bayon C's uh, father. And he came here, it was introduced to me by a professor friend of mine in the States. And they said, you'd like to interview? And I said, oh, sure, great. So he came over with his camera team and it was on my birthday actually in October. And so he interviewed us and um, interviewed me and and I went and watched one of his lectures because he had just released a book called Emancipation of the Slaves through music. Of course, he's a big music guy. and was one of the largest music companies in the world. Wow. So a very interesting wow. book that I read that, that, that he had written that he put together. And then he did a talk at the UCT, University of um, Cape Town's uh, MBA program. And it was amazing in that room. There's about 100 students in there, predominantly people of color, black and colored and Indian. And the conversation in that room because this doesn't happen in South Africa. It doesn't happen much in the States either. When you have a conversation about race and about racism and about racial inequality, generally chairs fly across right. the room. Right. Well, this was, a, this was a calm, pragmatic, thoughtful dialogue between everybody in the room and between Matthew, who was speaking there. I found that amazing. And then when, when Matthew interviewed me, we, we talked a lot about race as well. So our whole couple of days together was all around race. And it was a morning after he left or two mornings maybe that he left. And suddenly I woke up, two words came to my mind, race tour. I went, what is that? What's race tour? And it just suddenly started downloading. And the idea was to do a, a tour, but a show uh, all around the race and the how race divides us as a right. people planet, not just black and white discrimination or yeah. racism, all kinds, you know, the race, racism and racial inequality and racial conflict exists globally between sure. all around the world. So we, we've I've put together this concept for a, for a project called the Race Tour, and we're now going to do that. We're going to uh, launch it in. Um, it's developing now. We're going to launch it in February of, two, of 2020. Wow! Very cool. 
Yeah, so, getting past the physical appearance of separation. Well, know, the idea not, is is to is to teach that we're not separate. Is to exactly. go back. You know, as I explained to Matthew, I said, you know, if you look at, we found DNA, human DNA in in meteorites. So it's yeah. very clear that we all came from the exact same place. But through this, um, over millennia, we have indoctrinated ourselves into believing that there's some separation between us, you know, because of uh, a cultural difference or because of a color of the skin difference or a religious difference. Yeah. And of course, we realize that there is no difference between us. And this is what we, in my mind, are evolving to, becoming yeah. um, uh, a race of people who realize that we're not separate anymore. Let's, that's an archaic belief system that we need to now do away with because it is responsible for the majority of the problems that we experience on this planet. Yeah. You can attribute poverty. You can attribute pollution. You can attribute war. There's so many things that you can attribute to this idea of separation between the us as human beings on the planet yeah including borders yeah including including borders <laughs> yeah yeah that's that seems to be coming up more and more i wanted to ask you too you mentioned empath uh and uh and one of the things i've been seeing is uh where the empath you know uh the people that are sensitive ultra sensitive and who have spent a lot of time alone seems to be some type of involvement uh where they're learning to discern and not take on other people's energies, respect their, those people's past, uh, see what is their own energy and stay to themselves like you're talking about and, uh, and process it that, that stuff themselves. Uh, you know, being that everything uh, that comes at us is first for us before we can take it out into the world and, and uh, try to uh, bring that universal wisdom to our own experience. How, how has your journey been as an empath? Uh, how are these uh, energies and the changes in this transition affecting you, and how are you handling it? It is funny. My background, my upbringing, you would not think that I would be who I am today and doing what I'm in today because I'm, I'm the guy from the other side of the tracks. I'm, you know, I'm, a, I'm a guy. I'm a dude. I'm a, you know, I'm a bloke. I'm, you know, <laughs> we used to hang out, drink beer, have fun, get crazy go to jail, rob, all that kind of stuff, right? And and these kinds of things, like talking about empaths, is not something that would have been in in my um, sphere, you know, yeah. growing up. Now, that said, when I was 16, I did have a, call it a spiritual experience, if you want to, um, where something just came to me, and I just understood that something was going to happen at some point in time in the future. I didn't understand what that meant. But there was something that came in. But otherwise, we never really, we never really talked about these things. But what's interesting about what I did do back then is that we were, we just were. And it's yeah. funny. It's funny that I feel like that's what I'm going back to yeah. is just just being. Now yeah. it's just being, but it's being more in an awake state of being. But it's just being. I, when I was at my, you know, I do these sweat lodges um, that I've been doing for 15 years. And I was at one, two, two sweat lodges ago. And I remember laying on the, the grass there. And as I was laying there, I felt this, and, I'll, and I'll, I'll get to the empath part in a second. So this is all part of it. Yeah, yeah, that's good. <laughs> but I felt this sort of breeze come across me as I was laying on the grass with the sun and beautiful surroundings out in the Karoo. Um, and then suddenly this breeze came across and, you know, you feel sometimes energies that take you back to certain times or take you right. to certain events, right? So this breeze came across me and that feeling of that, that texture of the sun that was down on me took me back to a time I literally went right back to when I was in my teens and in my sort of 16, 17, 18 years old. And, and I went back and I was in that headspace. And what I realized in that headspace, I said, wow, I wasn't thinking back then. Right. Right. I wasn't intellectualizing back then. I wasn't trying to figure everything out back then. And it was really interesting to be, to go back in this headspace that I'm in now and suddenly get immersed back into that headspace and to be conscious of both of them. And it was, it was an amazing experience. And it taught me again, it's something that I've been teaching for a long, long time, but it taught me again also to just be yeah. and forget all this. <laughs> the is, the, yeah. The is and the, yeah, the is and the are. Yeah. yeah, and so and so on the empath side, it's not something that um, 
I never understood what it was that I was going through over the years, and I never spoke to people about it. I, I, I literally assumed that I guess everybody else is experiencing the same thing, and that's just part of life. Exactly. And it made it made life very uncomfortable. I when I was in crowds, I was just uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, I just couldn't be in a crowd, and I didn't understand why, because it seemed like everybody else could. And um, but I figured they must be going through the same thing, and none of us are talking about it. Right. And I would just have these these energies, and literally would have these voices coming through to me. So I would see somebody, and I would hear their words talking. But I heard another voice, not in words, but another voice in energy that would be talking. <clears throat> and I'm hearing something else. So I'm, I'm hearing what I'm seeing on the surface, but I, I hear another voice. And I think to myself, well, don't trust that. Yeah. Back then I said, don't trust that. You know, that you, you hear what they're saying. That's what they mean. And it was only until, you know, the last sort of three, three years or so that I finally came out of the closet, so to speak, and said, okay. And I started reading up on empaths. And it was the first time that I was able to really fully embrace that and then have no issue around, you know, having that discussion with people like yourself and talking about that. Yeah. Because when I see people, even you right now, I mean, I can I can sense other energy that's that comes from you, even though I can see what we're talking about. There's other things that I sense that are coming from you as well. In other words, I see a little bit deeper into absolutely we and we all have that absolutely i believe that we all have those abilities as part of our innate nature to be able to do that we just simply have been it's just been blocked by it's been blocked yeah. by all yeah. of this you know there's so much yeah. there's so much input coming in that there's just too much information not enough knowledge and not enough wisdom certainly not enough in, not enough wisdom yeah so we've just been inundated with information especially now we're in the information age and that information is just is blocking us from our own innate intuitive nature. Yeah, I, I go through that a lot on these shows, and uh, you know, it's it you you literally you do you hear two voices, and like you said, one of them's not a voice; it's an energy. It's mm. it's almost like you know, I, and I, I don't really want to put it this way, but it's like uh, they're saying one thing, but you're hearing another. But they're actually yeah. saying two things, and you got to respect both of them. And sometimes I hear multiple voices, you know. Uh, but it's an interesting thing, and that's I do much think it's more becoming a serious problem, Todd. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's the whole point. That's why it took you until three years ago to figure out it was not. It was. It was normal. <laughs> but, uh, but so I mean, now have you yeah, found these things? And you know, what? just get off the bus, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Well, that's the is and the are. You know, it just is what it is. It is what it is. But uh, so when this occurred to you, when this when this happened, or when you finally stepped out two, three years ago, uh, have you found it easier to go into crowds now? Um, yeah, because you're more aware of it. Uh, and also what you do is you, because that now becomes part of your being, yeah. you, you you tend to energetically set your life up so that doesn't actually happen very often. Yeah. So, so then that's just one more part of putting yourself into alignment with who you are in the universe. Because, you know, we can bend the universe to our will. I've done that many times. And we we ultimately find out we get ourselves into trouble when we bend the universe to our will. It is possible and we can do that. And um, and I and I say that from, from personal experience. But we so when we are awakened to more of the things of who we are, when we find out more of who we are, that energy we create for our lives sets ourselves up so that only the things that are in alignment with us actually happen. So for me, I don't actually have an, a lot of opportunity to to go out into public. There's no reason for me to go out a lot into big places. You know, you know, one of the things that I never liked was my phone ringing, yeah. and my phone almost never rings because me I, too. Enter, I put it out there. And say, I don't ring my phone. I don't want my yeah. phone ring. It, yeah. To me, it feels like, and it's not the same for everybody. It's some people need to answer their phone, and I, I well understand that. For me, I just don't like the sound of a phone intruding in my space, especially when I'm alone. And so, so the phone never rings. So we create, we can create those kind of energies when we align ourselves, when we find ourselves, and then align ourselves with where we fit in in the in the greater scheme of things. The things that we need and don't need suddenly come and or disappear. Yeah. yeah. If you're not trying to bend the universe to your will. Yeah. Exactly. You're not trying to bend the universe to your will. Yeah. Because then you'll find all kinds of things are going to come in that you really don't need. 
and the empath side as well coming out uh, on the empath side and accepting and embracing that yeah um, and embracing this ability to be able to read to be to, be able to read people has helped yeah. enormously um, with the sessions with Chris, the, the one-on-ones or the group sessions that I do with people, um, because that enables the conversation to actually flow in a, in a much more um, intuitive and connected way where we're really getting at the core of whatever it is that we need to be talking about. So, and I think that the reason why the, that work is now taking off more and I feel so comfortable with it is because I've embraced the the idea of being an empath and the idea. Yeah, of, it's like you took what you was a perceived uh, weakness and turned it into a strength, and which is actually strength in your energy field. So you may not go out in public as often, but when you do, you're you're uh, you know you're locked and loaded, and yeah. and holding your ground. Yeah, yeah. You know when you when you do these shifts in life, and I understand it's not easy for people to do a shift, especially to go down the kind of path that I'm on at the moment, especially from where I came from. It's not something that most people might expect you to do and maybe even question it because they go, well, that's not who I remember. I don't remember him being like this. Yeah, I remember him being like this. I remember him being arrogant. I remember him being strong. I remember him being a leader. I remember him being, you know, whatever. And then suddenly you're saying, well, this is what I do. And so, and, and being able to step outside of that old skin and into this new skin, that's a big step for people. Yeah. It certainly was a big step for me. Absolutely. And, and I finally, it, it feels so good. It feels like this is the last part of the last major step in my journey that I've taken. The last time you and I spoke, you at, we were talking about when did you, when, do, when did you awaken? And yeah. I, and, and I said, I, been to sleep and awake seven times. You said, when did you last go to sleep and wake up? And I said, it was last Friday and you left. Yeah. And, and I honestly feel now for the first time that that probably is the, that was probably the last time that I went to sleep. Yeah. The way so that I feel. Yeah. So you're sustaining that uh, consciousness or sustaining that uh, uh, true identity of yourself. Yeah. Yeah. But we never know what's going to happen in our futures, do we? We, we no. just allow it. We allow it to come. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. if, if I were suddenly to go to sleep, then that's fine. <laughs> then, yeah. Yeah. It will be true. That's true. You can't you can't uh, be attached to anything you don't know. And I think that's a big part of the energy that seems to be uh, expanding in the collective is is the whole uh, you know tomorrow's gone, uh, the future's it's gone, and there seems to be like uh, a focus or a pressure or a force. And for lack of a better word, forcing us into just just right now. That's it. You know? Yeah, the the future doesn't exist. You know, it's just mm-hmm. there is no future. You know, the only thing that really is is right now. And and of course, you can't hang on to. You have to. You use the word detachment, and and it's a very very good word. Um, it it's it's one of the aspects of what I'm I'm writing a new book right now called yeah. the Next Level Awakening. And it's part of that process, this whole idea of detaching, detaching from outcome and detaching from ownership. Both of those pull us out of the present. That's right. Uh, you know, the, the, the idea of ownership that we actually own anything, what we realize, of course, that happens is that it ends up owning us. And it, yeah. so we're not controlling it longer. When we think about an outcome, well, the outcome ends up controlling us because it's some outcome that has to do with some future event. Yeah. That doesn't mean that you don't plan and think about uh, an outcome of the future and plan for that outcome, but you're not married to it. You're not emotionally tied to it, psychologically tied to it, spiritually tied to it. You understand that you go with the universal flow, and when whatever happens tomorrow happens tomorrow, and the next day happens the next day, you can plan that outcome in the present. Whatever it is that you need to do to achieve that outcome, you can plan that in the present. Just don't live it. Yeah. I can plan to go to the, I can plan to do something tomorrow, but if circumstances and I can make those plans, like having this, this chat with you now, we could have made this plan. And, but if I lived emotionally in making this, oh, do I, am I this? And is it going to be, what are we going to talk about? Now? <laughs> yeah. No. You, you, you drive yourself nuts. And what happened yeah. if, if, if there was a technical glitch and we couldn't yeah. have this call, all of that would have been, an absolute waste of time. For or if us. you go off script all of a sudden and they're like, oh, wait a minute, what do we do next? You know, and, and even in regard to your race tour, 
uh, or even in regard to what I'm working on, you know, which yeah. is, you know, solo key and expanding it. Uh, you know, and I've gone through that. You know, I've gone through that, blown it up, started again, blown it up, started again, uh, because it is attachment. You know, it is, uh, you know, having, uh, you know, it's almost like you can't structure it, you can't control it, you can't plan it. Uh, it's more of an energetic thing, more of a generality. You know, this is what I want to do. I want to expand it. Uh, but if I'm going to sit here and create all these straight lines and say, okay, this is what it's got to fit in, then like you said, uh, we don't own it. It owns us. Yeah. You know, I see the, we're, we're going through such a huge, massive change globally in society. I mean, yeah. shows like your show, you know, with the, and all the people that I see that you have on your show, all these people that are they're just having this, this awareness, this mindfulness, this awareness, this awakening, this, these different ideas about who we are and how we exist here. No problem with who we've been because that was necessary, right? That yeah, all and exactly. the proof of that is because it happened. So we don't we don't discount what we where we came from and who we've been and what we've done in the past. We say that was all necessary to get us to where we are in the present. And where we are in the present, I see it um, more and more every day. Now it could be just because I'm involved in it so heavily that I'm seeing it more, but I don't think so. I I see just so many more people. And even in the mainstream, let's call it the sleep state. I don't really like the word, but let's just call it the, the sleep state. The sleep state instead of the deep state. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> so, so even there, you're seeing in the mainstream, in the main, let's call it the mainstream sleep state. Even there, you're seeing little bits and pieces. You look at some of the advertising, you go, wow, look, what, look at the advertising. Look at the message that they're trying to incorporate in the advertising. So what it is, is they're hearing these kind of messages coming through um, from people who are talking like you and I are speaking now. And they, they don't understand exactly what it is that they're hearing, but they know that it's moving, that it's growing. Yeah. And so they just pull little bits and pieces of them in and they, they incorporate it into what it is that they're doing. We see corporations now, I'm very encouraged because um, this year, 2019, I've chosen to move into the corporate environment in terms of the sessions with Chris, the work that I do. Yeah. And in the corporate environment, I'm finding more and more uh, companies are also pulling in those ideas into, into their workspace and how they operate their companies. And what I say to companies is if you're not heading down this path, or at least it's not on your, you know, your radar, you're going to fall behind yeah. because this is the way there's a new way that things are moving. And we need to change the paradigm drastically. The reason why, you know, when I look at the race tour, the race tour is is also a change of the paradigm. And I, as I've said to everybody that's involved in it, that's becoming involved, I said, no, we need to we need to just turn race on its head, shake it up, rip it apart, deconstruct it, and have a different discourse about what race really is, and just flip it, flip it on its head. If we if we keep holding on, and, and you even see when I have conversations with people about it, because they just don't want to let go of certain things. Yeah. yeah. Go, you understand you have to let that go. Absolutely. And, and we get into we get into the reasons why you let it go, you know, what what that connection is, and does it really serve you? And does it serve society and humanity? And eventually you find the answer. If you really, if you really can be honest with yourself. You look deep down, you realize, no, it doesn't. It doesn't serve humanity. Yeah, yeah. So and, and there's no other way to go when you come to that conclusion, as you say, I guess we need to shift. We need to change something. Yeah. So yeah. we're seeing that change happening all around. And this is what the book that I'm writing, this is what the next level awakening is about, is coming to that understanding that we need to make a radical shift in the way that we exist as a species. We're, we're on that path already now anyway. Time to just make it happen. You know, you know the twelfth monkey syndrome. You've you've heard that before, yes? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. About the uh, the monkeys on the island with the potato. For your for your viewers that might not be familiar with it, the scientists had done a study where they had these monkeys on an island and they introduced potatoes into the diet, and the monkey didn't like the potatoes because because they had the skin on it, and it, it took one monkey to figure out peeling the skin. Oh, it's 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 tasty underneath and then what happened is he taught one other and then they taught the others and then when it got to let's we'll call it the number 12 that's why they call it the 12th monkey syndrome 
when it got to the number 12, that they understood this, that if you peel it, suddenly all the monkeys on the island woke up one day and went, oh, peel it, and it tastes yeah, good, yeah. without having ever seen it. Yeah. So, ener yeah. so energetically, we're feeling this shift and this change going on. Yeah, I think that's the key word, too, and I was going to ask you about that. How much of that is an energetic uh, imprint yeah, or impression? impression. Versus, versus, you know, you know one, monkey one monkey teaching, teaching the, the, the next one, and the second, one, second one teaching the next one. The next one. It's, it's, an it's an energetic thing, energetic thing. Just, like just like your intention, intention with your race, your race tool. Tool. the energetic, energetic uh, uh, impact, uh, impact of that, of that uh, uh, is starting, uh, to, starting, you know, to, starting to be palpable, yeah. starting to be something that we can actually see, touch, and feel. These things are uh, coming to the surface. Uh, and this is, I think, going back to what we talked about earlier, which is our true nature. You know, we yeah. talked about uh, before the show started. I mean, you can't really explain these things where we came from. You know, this is a it's a new world. You know, it's it's in, and it's uh, it's all in this present moment. You know, based on the things we're doing in the present moment. Yeah. yeah. Does it does it really matter where we came from? Isn't that also just the past? It's just another story. It's another, story. It's another just label. Another, just another story. Yeah. yeah. For me, it's um, people. There's a lot of people who spend a lot of time on trying to figure out where we came from. I have no objection to that. And it'd be interesting mm -hmm. to, to see if somebody comes up with a, a plausible or even a, a realistic and believable answer to that. What's always more enticing for me is what we're doing right now. You know, you and I right now, the most important thing on this planet right now for me is you and I having this conversation and, yeah. and, the, and the people that are listening to us at the moment. There's nothing more relevant, more important, more present, more current than that. You know, that's this is what's happening right now. Have you? Let me Have ask you. Let me ask you, ask you this. Because uh, you, you you mentioned inter energy, and I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, it's so, okay. so energetically, the the people that are watching right now, and you and I, we are energetically impacting not just our ourselves, yeah. Yeah. the entire universe. If we yeah. look yeah. at how we're created in a physical sense, we look at physics, and we're all made up of atoms, right? And energy, and that and that spreads throughout the entire universe. I don't know if you read recently they they've they've extrapolated um, some data and and say that there's now two. They believe there's two trillion galaxies. The yeah, amount of yeah. planets in those two trillion galaxies they can't write the number for. And, right. and interestingly enough, that only amounts only accounts for zero point zero one percent of what's actually out there. That's what we can actually see. The rest of it's yeah. dark matter. But energetically, we are we are impacting the entire universe. I agree. And, and meaning everybody and everything in the universe also conspired for this moment between you and I and the people that are listening and watching right now for this to happen. So it was, we're all, I always say to people, we're not individual dancers in the show. We are the dance. Yeah. And so this is all of us dancing together um, conspiring together, if you want, that we created this moment in which this is happening right now. Yeah. So energetically, we, we were, it's not that we're suddenly impacting and we're not impacting, we've always been impacted and we're working in tandem with all seven and a half billion people on the planet right now are working in tandem with us right now with the, the number of people and, and you and I that are, are having this chat. And, and, and the trillions and trillions of galaxies. galaxies. <laughs> and the trillions of galaxies, yeah. All yeah. of that being impacted by our words we speak, the intentions we're feeling, the love we're feeling, the the electromagnetic pulses that come off of our hearts. You know, all of that is resonating, you know, everywhere simultaneously. And we know that energy doesn't take time to travel, so it's instantaneous That's right. That's throughout right. those two trillion universes, right? Do you think time? Do you, do you think time is doing anything funny right now? I'm just curious. I think what? Do you think time, linear time, or what we've known as time, is doing anything funny right now? Is it? Is there? Is there some type of time an, uh, anomaly, or uh, does it seem different to you? I'm just curious. Well, I know as I get older, time seems to go faster. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's part of getting older. Or this it's just the times right now, but. Uh, uh, and one, another thing I want hasn't I don't I understand your question and I'm yeah. just researching my archive to see if there was something yeah. that uh, that came to my mind with regards to time, and I for me no I don't feel that there's something happening with time, yeah. um, 
Only I mean, because I think I think, I think like I see time is linear anymore. I see time is. That's nine. what I mean. Yeah. yeah, that's what I mean. It's like we came, and I love what you said earlier too. You know, uh, the only thing relevant is now, uh, and and what what we were in the past, and what the past was. Uh, we can honor that because uh, it served us. But I love what you said that you know I don't think time is linear anymore. Like I guess that's what I'm getting at. Something's something's changing. The emphasis is whether. There's a universal force, or we're doing it, or whatever, on the now, on the present. And, well, I think what we're different. seeing is what what we're seeing with time. Uh, we're starting to awaken to the idea that it's not linear. Yeah. And when yeah. you awaken to this idea that time's not linear, yeah. suddenly you yeah. see, yeah, everything. Yeah. You know, all of a sudden everything comes into view simultaneously. Yeah. And of course, the way that I perceive. Um, the universe is that we are a conglomeration of an infinite number of choices, moments, decisions, being, physicality, all of that ex coexisting simultaneously at the same time for all time and all the time. So when you get off of the linear, um, the linear time trap and to the nonlinear, then you start to understand that concept that everything yeah. is just simply happening all the time. Yeah. past, present, and future. Yeah. You know, funny that we created the, in my mind, we created the internet on a physicality level. We created the internet to replicate something we already knew existed. And that was that all knowledge, all wisdom, all information, all, um, you know, higher thinking already exists in the, in everything. Right. Yeah. yeah. Because of, because in our sleep state, we don't acknowledge that we don't see that. So what, but we, but we do have an inkling of it. Yeah. So we, yeah. we keep creating these things like the internet to replicate that which are, which already exists, which is that everything already exists and is, and is there for us to just go and, and it's ours. It's, yeah. it's within yeah. us. It's already there within us. It's like a physical like Akashic record. record. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Google yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like a physical Akashic record. I think, and I think another thing that's interesting. Except that it's limited. Is, except that it's limited. Well, yeah. And, and that's, yeah, to my next point. I think another thing that's interesting, too, is even though there's this physical construct and there's, we've got to admit, some element of control for those that have been empowered to set it up, frame it up, uh, there's this human element that is etherical, that is energetic, that can supersede that control mechanism. You know that the intention you know like you were talking about the heart space the intention of, of what we're putting out there on this physical manifestation of the ethers of the akashic we can actually impact it and alter uh, alter it by the power of our thoughts and our actions and our words yeah which is what we're doing this yeah. is the this is the path that people like yourself um are on because you came to that awareness to say you know we we're awakening we need to change these things and so that's what you adopt and you yeah. you put that energy out there and you cause that effect and a change yeah yeah and you don't judge it by the uh, linear or by the human or whatever you want to call it 3d or, or uh, the numbers the traditional way that we've gauged and measured stuff because uh, you because we're starting to come into that awareness that energetically uh, it's an infinite like you said we we don't just impact the eight million people or eight billion people seven billion people we impact the entire multiverses and then dimensions and, and all that stuff. Uh, I wanted to ask you two questions or, or, or uh, uh, approach two subjects. One being, you mentioned before we got on, which I didn't know about, that, that Cape Town's gone, was, what did you say? It was going to be the first major city in the world that was actually going to run out of water. Yeah, I mean, it's a surprise you had heard that because it, it did hit it did hit globally. What was the other one you said? And well, I wanted to ask you in relation to what we're talking about, what what have you seen uh, the impact being on on the city? How people responded? Are they are they in fear? Are they are they uh, catching the wave of this expanded awareness? Well, you know, it was it was really interesting. We're, we're as I said to you on, before the show, we were. We're kind of out of the woods now, although yeah. we're still on strict water rationing, as I explained to you. So the things that uh, earlier this year, uh, we're, we're in our summertime now. When we go through yeah. November, December, January, February, that's our summertime. Uh, it's your wintertime in the, in the Northern Hemisphere. 
And so during that time, last year, during this time, at the same time now, we were down to our last 14% of water, which meant we really only had 4% of water left because the last 10%, it isn't really usable water. It's just too murky. So we were going to be, and it was on the headlines around the world, to be the first city, first you know, developed modern city in the world of 4 million people to suddenly run out of water. And um, it's amazing how denial works because people... When you, because there's all kinds of threads that we had locally, you know, social media threads, um, articles that were posted by various uh, publications, and people would comment below those articles. And when you when you read those um, those posts, that by the way is something that's more interesting to me than articles and posts that people put on social media. I love to look at the comments of people because it tells me a lot about society and yeah. a lot about what people are doing and what they're thinking, where their headspace is. And so I, so I read a lot of the comments that people were putting up, and it was amazing the, um, the absolute diverse, broad range of thinking in regards to this crisis that people were, that, you know, the two extremes that people were on, to the point where some people were calling it a conspiracy theory, that it was plenty of water, and, and it was just the, you know, the, the um, ruling party government that was just trying to make the Western Cape ungovernable, so the complete denial about the realities that was going on. Um, other people, um, you know, saying that, well, we can never run out of water. There was people like, we could never run out of water. Well, of course, we can run out of water. It, yeah. It's possible for that to happen. And it was, it, it, it was interesting that um, the, 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 sh the shaman that we do the um, soil lodge with, you know, he talked about, and Native Americans can come, and they can do rain dances, and, and it's been very, very effective, and they can yeah. do it. And Tim said, you know, he didn't really want to do a rain dance here. And the reason why he says, because the people have to shift. The yeah. people have yeah. to understand that the water is the most precious thing yeah. that we that we that we have. Water and oxygen, two of them. Not even food is in the top of the list. Because food, right. you can go two weeks without food. You can't go a minute without oxygen. You can't go more than maybe seven days without water. And and you look at what water blesses us every day, right? With our plants, with our drinking, sustains our bodies. Um, it gives us pleasure. Um, it cleans. I mean, the, it carries energy. You know, when you speak into water, that carries energy that actually goes around the world. When we do the sweat lodges, Tim speaks to the water before he puts the water onto the hot stones, which then turns into steam. Because when you speak that energy into the water, yeah. Um, there, that actually impacts the water, becomes part of the water. That message uh, is adopted into that into that water. And absolutely, then you put that water onto, onto the stones and that steam comes up, not only for us and, and penetrates us in the lodge, it goes into the entire universe and it penetrates everybody. So water carries a message globally. And so what Tim was talking about was, you know, having understanding that water is sacred and that water needs to be respected. Yeah. And I yeah. think there was a real wake-up call for Cape Tonians that this had happened, that we were at this crisis point where we no longer were going to have water and what were we going to do? And it was some crazy stuff. They had built these like water stations where they were bringing in water and they were going to pump water to us. And there was, I don't know, there was a handful of those. There's 4 million people. We all thought, how's everybody going to go into these water stations and get water? And that's going to be pandemonium. So we can start to see that we just we just weren't thinking right, and yeah. but it yeah. really came down to is people needed to change yeah, exactly their, their understanding, their relationship with water, their relationship with their environment, their relationship with the universe, because we started having um, mass prayers in South Africa to bring the rains. People who oh. weren't even of that, people weren't even of that sort of ilk we're coming out and saying, yeah, we need to change the energy here. We need, we need the rain. So what the rain kind of, I think what the, the drought did is opened a lot of people up. They opened them up to that, to that energetic side of life. Maybe even maybe moved them, them, maybe even moved them beyond race uh, in a place where there's a, there is that issue. Uh, yeah. You know, energetically and, and uh, moving towards that unity consciousness, which you're, you're going to tour really at the core of it. That's what you're touring about. It's, it's really well, everything, happens. everything happens for a reason. You know, nothing, nothing yeah. just, nothing just happens because it just happens. Yeah. Uh, and it, and so there's, there's a clearly a shift in my mind that happened in Cape Town with Cape Tonians 
Now, some people will fall back into the old ways. Yeah. You know, I remember when when the earthquakes happened in Los Angeles and I was out there for some of them. And the funny thing that happened during those earthquakes, during any disaster that we experience around the world, is something everybody comes together and everybody's concerned and yeah. everybody everybody wants to get involved. But when the crisis subsides, suddenly they go back to don't speak to the neighbor again, don't get involved, don't help, not brotherly love. So sometimes it takes a crisis to wake us up and um, not not everybody stays awake, you know, after the crisis subsides, but some do. I don't, I'm not advocating that crisis is the only way to wake up, but that's yeah. what happens sometimes. And I think that you will find that a lot of countries around the world, because of what Cape Town was going through, had to question themselves about their own relationship with water. Yeah. Uh, I, it, for me, water has always been really special. I've, I've never taken it for granted. But even, but even during the crisis, I started thinking, wow, I get a glass of water. I think, wow. So I drink a glass of water now. And as I drink that water down, I'm feeling it hitting my lips, going yeah. into my mouth, going down my throat into my body and actually nourishing my body. Yeah. And when you feel that, you just feel like, wow, this is, that is the definition of unconditional love. Yeah. And, and, that, and uh, yeah, yeah. And, and really actualizes our, our true power, which is uh, the conscious intention or conscious recognition or conscious appreciation. Of, and I really, you know, water is one face of it. It's everything. Yeah. Like you said, it's, it, it's, it's the you entire said, you said appreciation, absolutely, because the other side of that is is the gratitude that you feel yeah, yeah. from getting that water, and we we've, we've lost that. You know, we've yeah. we well, well, maybe we never had that, but that's what we're evolving to is to, yeah. is to go back, back. To the, is to go back and look at look at the things that are really meaningful us in in life. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to ask you too because I don't want to run out of time. Uh, I know you're writing another book, but uh, your other book is still pretty fresh. Can you? Give us a little, the one you just put up, can you give us a little backdrop on what that book's about? That one? You mean that book there, Todd? <laughs> <laughs> Who's that guy on there? <laughs> Look how clean, clean shaven. Yeah, I like the beard, man. Yeah, I, I, well, I, you know, I wanted to be like you, so I grew the beard. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, the book, yeah, I, I'm, I'm very happy that I wrote the book. And part of the reason that I'm happy is that People who have responded to it have responded to it favorably, but not because they say it's a well-written book. I, of course, I get that. People say, well, a really well-written book. But mo mostly because people write and say, hey, you know, you, you've made me think. Or yeah. some people have written to me and said, you know, this changed my life yeah. because of what you went through. So for me, it was great to be able to share my personal experience and then to have that personal experience be a, a benefit to others. Um, that book was the beginning of this real transition period in my life now. And since you and I spoke last, um, I've made an absolute commitment that um, my only purpose in life is, is to be of benefit and of service to others. Yeah. So that's, that's all that I do. Everything I do when I wake up in the morning is all focused only on that intention, is to be of service to others, to help others, to help themselves to better their lives, and to do whatever I can to ensure that the planet isn't further further degraded and isn't harmed any further in any way. Yeah. So I've made a, a commitment to myself. And the book was really the beginning of that because I wrote that book with the intention of being able to inspire others. Yeah. And, and it seems to be doing that. So I'm, you know, I'm grateful for that. that it's, it's it seems happening. to be the same energy of what you were talking about with working with your clients when you're on for three, four, five hours and you're telling them you should be paying me. I've heard that from practitioners recently on some of the broadcasts where they're talking, they're saying they've moved into this state lot, like what you're talking about, where they want to serve, but it's actually what they want to do the most for themselves. And so there's that mutual payoff, that equal yeah. energetic exchange. That of course is not the intention to do it for yourself. The intention is to just do it. The yeah. intention is for me, it's so easy when I get onto a call and I really prefer calls. I do do one-on-one -on -one sessions. Those it's a different dynamic when, when you're doing a call, and, and I don't do I don't do um, video calls because I find them very distracting. In fact, this whole interview with you, I haven't I've only looked at you a few times. I'm looking directly into the lens because well, I'm not find that ugly. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
because I find that with this looking at you technologically, yeah, it feels funny to me. Yeah. So when I look at people on Skype or WhatsApp call and the video call like this one we're doing now, it feels odd to me because it feels not real. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and so when I hear your voice, I'm hearing just the energy. And so that comes through stronger. So so I really enjoy doing the, the WhatsApp calls or the Skype calls with, yeah. uh, with clients. And then when you're with somebody, it's a completely different dynamic um, because then you're now you're you're together in a room and passing that energy like really close. You're actually getting the electromagnetic pulses from the heart. Yeah. Um, you're seeing into somebody's eyes. Um, it's really, really fascinating to me the difference between doing those sessions without seeing the person and without them being in the room and doing those sessions with the person and with them in the room. It's yeah. it's a whole different dynamic. It's not the same thing that happens. Yeah, it eliminates the BS meter. <laughs> Because well, a lot can a lot can be said by not what by what's not said if you're looking somebody right in the eyes and you're in the, in the presence of them. You know? Well, I think what happens sometimes with clients that are face to face is th this is what's interesting is that they know that they are being caught out because the eyes don't lie. That's right. Yeah. So when you're looking at somebody um, and you're doing the one on one with them. And suddenly you're looking straight through them and into them. Um, they, then they, you know, they they feel uncomfortable because they're being seen. When they're on the phone, they're able to um, let that energy come out in their own timing, their own pace. Yeah. Because you're you're not seeing what's yeah, going on. Yeah, they're more in their comfort zone. That makes yeah, sense. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they're in their comfort zone, but it's it, it's their comfort zone. And which is good, which is fine for me. I, I really like that. And that they're able to bring out what they want to talk about slowly. I had a client recently um, in the Middle East, actually, that brought up that slowly throughout our two or three hour call, um, it, when it started off was and what it ended up in was two completely different things. Wow. And, and it was because this person needed to um, evolve through their comfort zone. To the yeah. point of being able to, and to also to evolve the trust in me that, that that's what I was going to say. The level of they, trust increases. Yeah. Uh, trust that they could speak the things that they wanted to speak, um, and feel okay doing that, and then get to that point at the end. Now, if and I'm pretty sure that if we had been together um, face to face, that because of that eye contact, might not have ever gotten to that point. So I find that yeah. the uh, the calls are very interesting. Yeah, very cool. So uh, make sure that you put your link uh i know you sent it to me but uh, i want to make sure you get the right one put your link in the comments i look forward to collaborating with you again uh, are you going to be touring in the u.s we will i think there was i think there's something like 20 cities in the u.s there's 42 cities around the world we're doing 20 20 countries 42 cities at the moment wow that's that's powerful that's big so, that's 2020 when you're gonna where you're gonna do that we're gonna do that and we, we want to we just had that call this week we want to release we want to start the show in um, 2020, February 2020. And when are you going to release the, when do you uh, see yourself releasing the, the new book? The next book uh, I hope to release in the next two months. Very so good. Let's, let's say that towards, towards the end of March, I'd like to get the, that book out. Very good. Well, and that, uh, that book all talks about the, the, uh, the new paradigm, the new way yeah. in, in which we, in which we, are evolving to to start living a yeah. life uh, without buying into all this, you know. So just taking it to the next level. Yeah, yeah. Let me know when you're going to do that, and let's uh, let's do a broadcast together and, and uh, focus on uh, you know the specifics of the book because that sounds very interesting, very I timely as well. Doing broadcasts with you, my friend, <laughs> and, and likewise, and likewise. And let me say something to you as well. Um, your energy has changed significantly. Is that right? This is the last time that we spoke, yeah. So something obviously is going on. Um, I saw that broadcast that you did where you broke down into absolute tears. Basically, yeah, that was that was kind of a wall. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Something so beautiful about the about being able to do that uh, openly and publicly the way that you did it, because yeah. it inspires others to be able to do that, to be able to just show oneself. What I loved yeah. about when you did it is 
you were just you were just it was just coming out of you. Yeah, there was snot coming out of my nose. <laughs> <laughs> but, but there was you know, love coming out of your being. There was, yeah. you know, all yeah, of you know. It, it's like what you were talking about earlier when you were talking about, uh, you know, really almost like your, your higher self or whatever, you know, being present and the human being present at the same time. But uh, by all means, it was it was a call from the higher self. And, you know, you just you just do it, you know. So, yeah, I appreciate you saying that. And, and that's what I'm seeing in people. And that's what I love about what I do, uh, because I see people every day getting more raw. And to me, that's where. We get our biggest shifts, our biggest soul code exchanges, our biggest activations, our biggest inspirations from our people just being real. You know, it's amazing. Really, is. Not I appreciate it. it does happen. Yeah. Yeah, it really does. Uh, I look forward to seeing you again. Be sure and reach out to me if I don't reach out to you before then, because I really would like to uh, help you uh, expand the awareness of this book and anything else that you get into. I'm always here. Soulology is always here. We're a platform for people like you. And thank I, you for I, everything you're doing. I watch you regularly. Thank you, my friend. I really appreciate uh, you inviting me on. And, Absolutely. Uh, but what you're doing, you know, live in the present moment. Yeah. You're, gonna, you're gonna love Kauai. I know you haven't been there for a long time, but you're gonna love Kauai as you explore the island more. Yeah. Well, I don't know how long I'll be here, but you know, I'm I'm enjoying it while I'm here. It's a it's yeah. a special place. But you know, the whole world's special. It really is. That's one thing I've learned in my travels. It doesn't matter where you're at. You know, there's True. a portal everywhere. We're yeah, portals. You take That's, care. Peace yeah, out. You know, best to you yeah. and yours. And uh, I look forward to seeing you again. You take care. Lots of love, my brother. All right. You too, man. I'll see you later. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. We've got five shows tomorrow. Uh,